by a strange irony, we decided next to test a pure workhorse and discovered immediately that sort of sense of detail that had been so lacking in the American recreational vehicles. If you've got to have a tailgate, it might as well close like that. One quick look at the Toyota Hilux four-wheel drive utility and you can see immediately that there's a great deal more thought gone into that sort of detail. And I guess that'll influence the comfort, but we'll talk about that in a moment. Right now, let's think about the four-wheel drive transmission. This is a four-speed manual transmission, which I prefer, and particularly with smaller engines, as this one certainly is, being of only two litres, less than half of the capacity of the American four-wheel drives. The select mechanism for the high and low ranges is also easier to get at and easier to use, and we're going to use it right now. So let's go. That's in high two. That's high four. That's low four. Let's do some work. There's not really a lot of tricks in driving four-wheel drive vehicles over very rough country. It simply means taking things nice and gently and trying to select the most effective and therefore least difficult path. If you don't do that, you might finish up being stuck in a very embarrassing situation and not able to get out of it again. It is important to have already pre-selected the right range of gears. And by that I simply mean that if you're not in four-wheel drive, and perhaps even four-wheel drive low range when you need to be, you might finish up being stuck. That's embarrassing and awkward. The Toyota climbs hills like that one very well. It's got a stupidly located horn button, which I consistently keep hitting, particularly when I'm working hard. But there is a very high degree of roughness and discomfort from the suspension, which I suspect has something to do with suspension travel, and I'll confirm that a little later on. Uh, after all, this country is pretty rough, and it couldn't be expected to be much less than heavy going. The steering's pretty good, and certainly there is a very high degree of comfort in the cabin, which is important, again, uh, in conditions like these. In a minute, we'll get out of this and onto something just a little more reasonable. The jostling this thing give you drive you mad. Well, that has to be the reason. There's very stiff springing, obviously, and very short suspension travel. That is, the springs aren't allowed to travel very far before they hit the bump stop rubbers, and then there's no suspension at all, at which point, of course, it kicks the vehicle, which it's doing all the time on these rough roads. It also has very skinny little shock absorbers, not off-road shock absorbers at all. That's something they could certainly improve. And if they do, it will probably be a very good off-road vehicle, but it's not yet.
Although the Toyota Hilux four-wheel drive could be considered to be a recreational vehicle, quite obviously its major purpose in life is as a work vehicle. And so we have to test it off tracks occasionally. In this case, that means private property, paddock the sort of place it might be expected to do its most work. Pretty steep, pretty rough. Once again, I have pre-selected low range four wheel drive and I'm at this moment in second gear. It might not have needed low range, but the point is that it's better to have it and not want it than want it and not have it. And once again, get stuck halfway. This is steep. No problem, even in second gear. Very light throttle pressure, and just let the vehicle walk up. It handles these sorts of situations easily. The Toyota Hilux pickup will be a very good four-wheel drive vehicle when they revise the suspension. We could make an interesting hybrid here. If we took the suspension from either the International or from the Jeep and we slung it up underneath the Toyota, it would be great. Perhaps it needs a touch more power, but in every other respect, it really is a very good vehicle. And now for the Enigma. <laughs> 